Yeah, sure. A year ago, I had the pleasure to present the late breaking ash abstract of 42 patients uh, being treated with abrutinib for steroid refractory relapsed chronic graft versus host disease. We showed a high response rate of 67%, durable response rate. And again, uh, this was uh, exciting not only to the patients, their doctors, but the FDA, who approved this with the uh, breakthrough designation in August of 2017. We're back this year at ASH trying to understand the biology of how abrutinib impacted on the pathogenesis of chronic GVHD. We're presenting a poster at this uh, meeting and again at ASBMT in three months' uh, time that's interrogating the T and B lymphocytes where the abrutinib is uh, binding to and irreversibly inhibiting both virtin tyrosine kinase in the B cell pathway of activation as well as a homologue in the T cells called uh, inducible tyrosine kinase uh, 2. So this uh, ITK was kind of the unexpected benefit of abrutinib and it is creating an immune modulation where the uh, patient's donor T cells are skewing into a Th1, really anti-tumor and antiviral benefit, while uh, knocking down the uh, uh, damaging uh, T follicular and Th2 skewed uh, lymph node uh, immune response that pairs up with B cells. Uh, that's a key insight because it uh, really identifies abrutinib now as an immune modulator that might have roles beyond chronic GVHD. And uh, some of our work has shown that you could, for example, benefit CLL mantle cell using abrutinib after an allo transplant to make those donor cells kill cancer better. And there are now phase two trials with our using uh, abrutinib in diseases that don't even express uh, the uh, target BTK, uh, AML and ALL, trying to prevent GVHD and improve the anti-tumor responses.